Hi, my name is Colleen Picorni and I'm a graduate research assistant here at the Goldstein Museum of Design. Today I'm going to talk to you about this bustle dress that dates from 1870 to 1876. This dress is representative of the first bustle period, uh, which also lasted from 1870 to 1876. And this time period was really a transition from the all-around fullness that we saw in dresses with cage crinolines previously to a more structured bustle shape that was really concentrated at the back of the dress later in the 1880s. Um, a bustle is made by manipulation of the drapery at the back of the skirt combined with a cage crinoline uh, at this time period. Later on in the 1880s, we'll see the bustle being created by additional support structures and other pieces that would be used on the back of the dress to create the bustle shape. One of the ways we know this dress was designed for a bustle is by looking at the length. You'll notice that the hemline at the back of the dress falls below the hemline of the front of the dress when it's laying flat or when it's hanging up. Uh, this is because that extra fabric would be bustled up and then the hemlines between the front and the back would be level. The understructure on this dress would be a cage crinoline or hoops that extend all the way around the whole body with a little bit of extra fullness in the back to support the bustle. The overall styling of this dress is a two-piece dress with a matching bodice and a skirt, which was popular for the time period. Based on the really high neckline that we have here with the ruffles, and also the three-quarter length sleeve with ruffles, this was probably a day wear dress. Uh, an evening wear dress would have had a lower neckline and uh, longer sleeves. This dress uses a combination of brown and tan silk taffeta to really create a decorative effect. Um, and it uses the, the contrast of the fabrics to highlight a lot of the feminine details that we see on the dress. So this decoration uh, at this time period and what this dress shows is very feminine and fussy. You've got lots of bows, like you see on the sleeves and on the bodice, um, ruching and pleating, like you see on the lower part of the skirt. Um, we have piping and cording in the seams to highlight different areas of the body. And this is really, um, something that you would have seen during this time. So now we're just looking at the bodice of the skirt. So this is a tight fitting jacket uh, and the shape that this jacket would create is a fuller bust, a very narrow tight waist, and then a smooth rounded hip. So this shaping is created using um, boning and what's known as basques. So we have boning in the bodice from the waist to about the bust and this would create that really tight waist fit, but then allow for the fullness of the bust. And then below the waist, we have these extensions of the jacket, which are known as basques. So let's see here and here. And those would have gone over the hip to create that really nice round, smooth hip curve. You'll notice that the bodice is lined in cotton fabric, and this is to help protect the silk fabric from the wearer's body oils. Everything on this jacket has been hand sewn. You can see some of the hand stitching here along the back. We also have covered buttons, which are used to keep the jacket closed along with buttonholes. Then you'll also notice we have a few hook and eyes that would help keep the layers of the jacket closed as well. The sleeves here are a three quarter sleeve with the armhole set a little bit higher up on the body more to the natural armhole position to allow for more movement of the wear. Unlike some dresses we see from previous time periods where the armhole is set much lower and is much more difficult to move in. Three quarter length sleeve finishes in ruffles and bows and also some corded piping. So now we're looking at the back of the bodice or the jacket. You'll see a continuation of many of the same details that we talked about on the front. So again, we have some bows, we have pleating in the dark brown which goes down into these pleated ruffles again on the back basque. So this is the part that would extend below the waist and add to the rounded hip curve. And then this would flow into the bustle of the skirt, which we will see in a little bit. So now we're looking at the skirt and this is the back of the skirt. So the skirt, like I mentioned before, would be very full, uh, but more fullness concentrated at the back due to the bustle. The skirt sits at the natural waistline of the wearer and would, the top of it would be hidden underneath the jacket bodice. Uh, and it would be hidden by the basques or those extensions from the bodice that I showed earlier. Before I go into details about the bustle, we're gonna look at the hem of this dress. So you'll notice we have lots of ruffling details through the lower part of the skirt and then pleated ruffles along the bottom edge. 
If I flip this up, you can see that there's actually another layer underneath the, the skirt hem. And this is a stiffer labor layer that really helps to support and protect the dress. And so when I flip this over, you'll see multiple layers of fabric. So we have a much stiffer coated fabric here right along the edge to support and protect the bottom hem. And then we have layers of canvas and buckram uh, or linen to create a lot of weight and fullness down at the bottom of the hem. So it would make a really nice stiff feeling uh, when they're walking, it would be a really stiff pleats and folds coming off of the bustle. Uh, provide some weight to keep the skirt shape in place uh, and also to protect the skirt. So this delicate pleating here is protected by this under layer of the skirt. So we're still on the back of the dress, uh, just from a little bit of a different view. I'm sure you're wondering, hey, this is a bustle dress. Where's the bustle? I haven't seen anything big and poofy on the back. And that's what we're gonna talk about now. So see on the back of the dress, so we have a lot more fullness. There's a bunch of gathers right here at the waistband, and that's what's gonna start to create the bustle. So also notice that there's a line of stitching, two lines of stitching that runs across the back of the garment. And that is what gets gathered in to actually create the bustle shape. So we're gonna peek inside quick. You'll see that there is a gathered muslin layer that's inside and that attaches right where that stitching was on the exterior of the skirt. So what happens is there's a draw cord that sits through this channel, channel created by the stitching. That draw cord is pulled and then all of this gets pulled in and gathered up together to create a big poof bustle shape at the back of the skirt. I'll show you that inside again. And then that muslin piece um, would also, you can see that it has gathers and draw cords at the bottom, would also be gathered up to help support and arrange the bustle shaping. So on the flat, it doesn't really look like there's much of a bustle. Um, all of that is created through fabric manipulation by drawing in this fabric through a clever trick on the interior of the garment, and then it would be supported by the cage crinoline to provide um, additional structure and support out from the body.